Force Force and Alice Mania 9.5, New York City, uh, Saturday, October 25th. Yeah, my I'm band, saying. Horse Force. You don't know shit about Horse Force, do you, Jeff? I know nothing about Horse Force. Jeff Rowley, professional skateboarder who is apparently in a band as well now. And I thought that was very amusing when I saw a photo because you had a vert skater playing guitar standing behind you. And I didn't know that we mixed. We definitely mix, man. For the music, you'll do it. I'm all for the nine and a half foot vert ramp. Before you showed up, I told Michael, Jeff was always cool to me. And this was in an era where... Street dudes did not have to be called cool avert dudes. If you did it, it, it was because you were just a cool guy. So I always knew you were a cool dude. Cause... Well, thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. But you know the smell of those pads? You can never get away from it. <laughs> See, I was never a smelly vert guy. And I would fucking wreck people for being that. Especially if you're a pro. You get free pads. You can just throw them away and get new ones. But every now and then, there would be that guy who... Uh... You just put him in his bag, and then he put him back on, and put him in his bag, and travel the world, and just reeked. I think they were gold dust back then, weren't they? they like were the pads were like gold dust. You they washed them, you put them in the tumble dryer. That's right, I did do that too. But they were, they, those were the, that was the, the... Good old days? The good old days, I guess, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the new ones that I would throw away, I guess that was, by then it was... Not as good as that. It was when I was... Uh, that was the tail end of the hip pad era. Doing things that I might not have done if I didn't have a job to do. Well, you're still here now, so you've got that to be thankful for, man. Yeah, so you were just telling me how many injuries you uh, you recently did what you... Yeah, we're, we're at the tail end of filming the first van skateboard video. How old are you, Jeff? I'm 38. Okay, 38. Skating since I was 12. Right, and 38-year-old, uh, you don't heal as good... Correct, yeah. Or are you still... That's definitely correct. Yeah. Okay, it's happening. I'm flesh and bone. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. I mean, sorry, but good. You know, I'm just happy to hear that you can get hurt as well. You're lacerated what? Uh, lacerated kidney. I've internal had... bleeding. Internal bleeding oh, off a roof. You fell a off a roof fence. over a spike fence. No, actually, it's a tough one. I almost fell off the roof. Mm -hmm. And in order to not fall off the roof, I twisted my body, fell onto my stomach and was bleeding internally. Uh, I was going over a roof gap, over a spiked fence. Mm. Good for the video. Off the edge of one roof, a 40-foot roof, onto the edge of another roof that was about 31, 32 feet tall. Okay. Landing on the edge of it, over a spiked fence that was facing towards me. Uh, so I think Good turned, photo. I think it turned out pretty good in the end. <laughs> the one you made or the one that you fell to oh, your doom? Yeah. Well, it could have been a lot worse, let's put it that way. If I fell down the gap, I'd have landed on a spike fence on my stomach. If I'd have fell off the roof, I'd have fell to my head from 32 feet up with no control. If I'd have fell off on the push-up, I'd have fell 40 feet. So I landed on the other side. So oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just a little... So basically, the making it would have been better. Making it would have been way better. That's um, what you were going for. I was going for the make. And they yeah, usually do, the Michael. <laughs> no, it was a freaky one. It was definitely a freaky slam. I've, I've had four surgeries filming for this Vans video, uh, ankle and knee surgeries, um, and then that was the last slam, which isn't part of those injuries. One video part, four surgeries. One video part, four surgeries, a lacerated kidney, and some other stuff too. Is the video part done? No, I'm still working on it. Oh my god. <laughs> Because right when he came in here, he said that uh, you know he's filming this video and you know he uh, you know he wakes up in pain. This is a this is a life that um, this is a daily, monthly, yearly experience that you're getting. I'm here. I'm glad you're here to to because I always tried to explain that to people. There was a time there where you know I used to every now and then I would get hurt. Obviously, I would be sore every day, but that wasn't really a big deal. But when I got when I started to be like top three for a while. And there was a couple of tricks that I had that I would try in a contest that really never worked out. There was a couple of years there where it, it was it was kind of, to me it broke me. There were there was so many injuries and I got so many concussions in a in a straight run that it, yeah. I didn't retire, but I flinched. I started to get. I'm like, man, if I fucking wake up on the ground right now with another broken arm, I'm fucking done, dude. I can't. I can't. It's starting to really affect the way I ride. It I'm catches like, up to you. Without yeah. a doubt, it definitely catches up to you. And you know what? Pain, it's always the same. Except the more you get it, the less you feel it. You get numb from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, I don't. <laughs> I remember that too. And I don't remember thinking that that was like a positive thing. I oh. remember like not feeling the pain anymore. It was sort of like, maybe there's more to this later on. Yeah. 
Maybe there is. But, you know, this is the first van skate video. And for me, like, Vans have done so much for the skate industry and keeping yeah. it alive, supporting contests and demos and tours and all that stuff that I want to go for broke on this one. You know, it's not about age. It's about just documenting this period of skateboarding for me. So I'm actually enjoying it. The injuries I'm not enjoying so much, but the actual skate side of it's actually been really fun. Are you um, as good as you were? Yeah. You're yeah. still I think one so. of the best? I don't know about that. My ego is not large enough to where I'm actually going to make that statement. I'm one of the best skaters. But my, my whole thing is like, if you continue to progress at whatever you're doing and you're enjoying and you it, and I am progressing, I'm learning new tricks. You know, and most of the tricks that are in this video I haven't done before. Huh? And that doesn't mean they're particularly groundbreaking or special, but for me, they're special. Right. So, nowhere near retiring. You got more. Plenty more. I got enough until these legs just decided they were going to hang themselves up. Are they telling you that yet? They're, they're dragging at me in the mornings, but you know what? I'm going to give them a good fight. Once you're on your suite. Uh, I'm, you know what, Jason? You can just guess it. When I go down, man, it hurts. But you just get back up. And like I said, like I think when you've made so many skate videos like this, you know, I mean, you know Danny really well, right? Yeah. You know what Danny goes through when he's making a video part and he's finishing a video part? We're talking about Danny Way here, yeah. one of the best skateboarders that ever lived. Not one of the best skateboarders that ever lived the face of the earth. I agree. The most prolific, the most abusive, um, the most progressive. And, uh, you know, I grew up on that, looking at a guy like Danny and going, I want to be like that. Right. I want to skate like that. I want to be that passionate. Uh, and, he, and he's willing to give it everything, you know, like that. And there is something I'm not intentionally willing to give and that's you know my absolute health uh, but while I'm learning new stuff and, and learning new tricks I'm gonna keep on keeping on. You smash your head on the ground at all? I've banged my head a few times I've never been one of those dudes that like he falls and then boom he bangs his head on something the certain dudes their heads seem to be a little bit heavier than the rest of the yeah, I think that was me. <laughs> no I'm the, I'm the other dude like everything goes to my ankles knees back I pretty much I don't know man I broke like 10 11 bones I've had a you know, fair amount of surgeries and you know, the slams that really hurt are the ones that uh, are not bone, for when you tear in muscles and things like that. Right. So, yeah, I have hit my head. I've smashed this tooth out three times right here. I've had stitches on my chin. I've had stitches on my forehead. I've had stitches on my cheek, on the top of my head. I've had black balls. I broke both my ankles. Oh, uh, black balls. Yeah. Black balls, you say. I'm not worse than blue balls, Michael. They sound worse. Yeah. So, wait, tell me a little bit more about black balls. Uh, when they're black, they're worse than blue because there's more blood in them. Yeah. I've had that. Blood I got that from a moto crash. I fucking hit my hips. I got knocked out. I woke up and I'm like, man, I feel like there's something dripping in my leg, but I'm not bleeding. And then uh, I kept riding that day. And then the next day, very stiff. And then uh, I think maybe it was two or three days later, just my dick and my balls went black, which was weird yeah. because... There was a gap. There was like my stomach, and then the bit just above my dick was still so the normal flesh how did color. That so you, you hit it on what part? Of the I bike? hit my hip on the ground because I high sided. So I like whipped into the ground so hard that I guess I started bleeding internally around my hip area. And for some weird reason, some of it went down the side of my leg, but it skipped. You the whole the, top of your from the hip to my yeah. It just <laughs> I just filled my dick and balls with blood. And I remember telling people, you got to see this. It was, who was it? Brian Patch, who was riding motocross at the time. And I'm like, dude, my fucking dick and balls is black and blue. You wouldn't believe it. And I'm like, you got to see it. And I go to undo my pants. He's like, dude, fuck off. <laughs> and as soon as my dick came out, he went, oh, my God. And and, le and leaned over to like get a closer look. Because it was truly, it had its own Twitter at one point. Remember? It did. It did. He was super into your dick at that point. He was, Patch has always been into my dick and balls. Oh, so. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'll stay way clear of him then. Yeah, so I don't have, it's not, it's okay now, but, yeah, but those are... It's funny how those, like, really bad falls, though, just bounce around and resonate through your body. Like a car accident, a <laughs> motorcycle accident, I've had some slams like that where you fell on your legs. Next day, your whole back is, like, busted up, and then you can't move your neck, and before you know it, you're done and dusted. Yeah, so if Jeff goes down things that it doesn't seem right, you should go down it. Mine, when I used to go down things, if it worked out, it would just be a smooth run. He goes down things where, even if you make it, I don't think, even if I landed correctly, I would still be rolling away. It's sort of really shock-absorbing stuff. I definitely can't do as much of that as I'd like to. So you, but you still do it, though? I still do it, yeah. It's hard to find, like, unique spots like that now, you know? I mean, kids have so much <laughs> access to these crazy skate parks they go to all day long. It doesn't interest me, man. I like looking at architecture and riding stuff that no one else touches. 
So you don't go to the skate parks? I do go to the skate parks. parks yeah, and I ride. A little bit, but you're more of a, I go out into the real street and I, I go ride street. that. I do go skate parks. I usually meet dudes in parks, roll around, and then get on the road. It's pretty cool. Now, what percentage of your professional life now is still skating? Because I saw, you know, looking up online, you got a bunch of, you got your finger in a bunch of different other pies. Yeah, yeah, I mean. You I'm, got a knife you just gave me? Look yeah, at this thing. I take this on the fucking airplane and get in all kinds yeah, of that's shit. That's deadly. That's deadly. Yeah, I do a, a small knife brand too on the side. Uh, you know, I've always been interested in a lot of that kind of outdoor stuff. Uh, you know, hunting, outfitting. And Did I see axes as well? Uh, we do knives, axes, tools. It's a young brand. It's been around for about a year, and uh, you know, we're kind of just kind of just getting it going, having fun with it. Where? How? Direct. Why? Like you're into you camp or something. And no. then you get knives and axes. You start a business with knives and axes. You don't. I mean, explain yourself. That is a random thing to get into. Yeah. Okay. When I first started skateboarding, I grew up with a dude. I'll make this real short. I grew up with a dude who's a game warden. He's now the chief game warden for the whole north of England. And that's what's why I grew a game up warden. With. Ah, it's gamekeeper. Also, what you'd call him works for over here. It'd be the same as uh, I guess someone who works for the U.S. Forest Service. I okay. Would say. Or okay. maybe as someone who works for a game and fish, but helps kind of manage the. Uh, the wild animal populations for the benefit of all. Okay. Um, but they're managed a little bit differently in Europe than they are in the United States. But anyway, that's kind of, I've always had that as a backbone uh, growing up, having a friend that was really into that stuff. And he actually guided out here in Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Saskatchewan, uh, Alberta. He was a hunting guide. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, I don't know if you remember this, I was actually a vegetarian as well for a long time. And while I was a vegetarian, I was going out with friends that hunted and would shoot stuff. Wait, was, you shot stuff? No, I didn't shoot you stuff. You just stood the there and watched people shoot stuff? No, I would pretty much. <laughs> and like chewed on a fucking celery. Oh uh, yeah. Chewed on a <laughs> celery stick and standing and there like a fucking like a fucking rabbit while the rest of these people are murdering shit just and skinning that. shit I'm assuming around you? I wouldn't call it murdering. Uh, and I, I would call it very respectful and I would call it game management. Uh, and I would I would call it legal too. Okay, look, I grew up hunting. You want to well. get into this? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Me too. Let's I, do it. I don't. I don't have a problem with people that hunt. I. Yeah. I. I, uh, I was raised if you're going to kill something and you have to eat it. That was my only rule that my father gave me. Yeah, I mostly agree with that. Um, I don't think in this country that that uh, works so well, especially when you're talking about predators, which remain mostly um, very, very prolific and very damaging to populations of game if they're left unchecked. So there is times where certain predatory animals need to be kept in check. Like what? Coyotes. Yeah. Fox, bobcat, mountain lion, wolves. Nobody cares about coyotes. Wolves are cool. You'd think so. <laughs> we are in California, remember? I don't care coyotes, about coyotes. A coyote ate my pug. I used to live in Coyote Town up in the hills. Maybe Fuck cry. those coyotes. Yeah, I was really bummed. I actually at one point was had a, a, a warrant. I, I said you could come to the Red Dragons had a skateboard shop in Encinitas, and I said anybody who brings a dead coyote to the skateboard shop, I'll make sure they get like t-shirts and skateboards. Is that and... still open? No, uh, no, I let it go. Can I drop one off maybe at the station? I let it go. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend would love it because then she'd fucking stuff it and stick it on the mantelpiece. Yeah. So those, those, are, that's an example of times when killing an animal or taking the life of an animal, I think, is justified for the okay. benefit of everybody. So you're not a vegan now, then? No. I haven't been since, well, for about 12 years or something now, okay. I think. Um, but it was mostly for health reasons, but that's kind of what got me into, you're talking about knives, yeah. and the knife company that I yeah. do. I had an idea for a knife about seven years ago, because I was going on so many, mount I, I mountain lion hunt uh, every single year for the last Shut 12 years. Up. Wait. Not, not half as much as I'd like to. Not with it. knives, though, with guns. With guns. Yeah, with okay. guns. Um, but I had a couple of situations where I felt like the backup knife I had was insufficient. Uh, insufficient to skin the beast or to the beast was not done self-defense against a mountain lion self-defense against a mountain lion or a larger predator yeah i felt like the speed that which something was going to go down um, and your reaction time that you had in front of it was was it was not going to save my life it was going to put me into a very bad situation and i realized how quick that happens by watching how quick these things move and how much damage they do so fast um have you had a fight with a mountain lion? No, I've had. I have had uh, lions running through brush around me and me not being able to see them. Yeah. Uh, where you are exposed, situations yeah. like that. I've also had it where we've chased certain lions that are very aggressive, and they t attack and fight the dog. A lot of times they'll double back on you and follow you. 
A lot of times I'll jump on tree on rocks, one rock to another rock, up in a tree, wait for you to walk past, wait for the dogs to leave and get lost, and walk behind you and follow you. Sounds so personal I've had some creepy to me now, stuff Michael. happen, and I've seen some creepy stuff, and uh, and like I said, uh, you know the the knife company I started, the first knife we brought out, it's called the Striker, it's a self defense knife. It's actually a wavy blade, a curvy blade. Can you type this in, Michael? I need to see the Striker. Okay. I need to see what he's talking about. You, you designed a fucking knife to defend yourself against mountain lions. Uh, yeah. All people. You're not... Why do I sense, like, some sort of weird... You're, like, dark a little bit. No, man. You're, you're, ask, you're asking the question, and, and, and really, like, in a self-defense situation, what are you going to do in your house if somebody breaks into your house? Knock them out. So immediately knock them out. What if you're asleep? You wake up. They're right above you. They're about... 10 yards away from you. It's pitch black. You can see their feet from the angle that you're laying at. Yeah. What are you going to do? Get up and knock them out. Get up and knock them out. Yeah. Well, what, what, are you, what are you going to do? Pull a knife out of your pajamas and throw it at him? I might do. Do you have a knife in your pajamas? I don't wear pajamas. Is it? Well, is it up your ass? Where's your knife? <laughs> it could be under the pillow. It could be the side of the bed. Do you have a knife under your pillow? I have a, I have a knife by the side of my bed. Yes, I do, Jason. Right, that's you, like I, I now think, you're getting personal because now you're actually opening up my the inside of my house. To nobody's crazy coming maniacs. to kill you, They're Jeff. Coming to kill me. Nobody's They're coming to get though. me. Do you live a bit, a bit, a little bit? Of, do you have like a lot of water at your house? Like, are you ready for that kind of thing? No, no, I'm not one of those uh, one of those guys that's open. But, do you have a gun? Yeah, those guys are crazy. I do, <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do have firearms, but but my point was really is uh, in a very in, with a very quick and a very short period of time when someone's attacking you you can't do too much pulling a gun out loading a gun taking it out of a locked right. container is yeah. pretty unrealistic in your house i agree okay i and, don't have one for that reason and you could also be it. shooting all your neighbors too just or just somebody like could get it off you and shoot you and your family like there's, that, there's that too and it's and i think what is it between five and eight shots in any kind of given uh, firearm scenario right. between the police and the general public it takes five to eight shots to actually take the assailant down I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's something like that. I'll it's take not, report. I mean, so having something like a knife that it's built and designed to cut and bleed something hmm. in your hand without too much work from you, I think it's just common sense. It's practical. Um, and I don't know if you looked at the knife, but the angles... It's right, right, right there. Okay, see the angles of the blade? See the point? It's like a dagger, so it'll go into the flesh. As soon as it gets into the flesh, it opens up a wound channel on the top as it's cutting on the bottom of the blade. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, the finger notch, which is for your index finger, Yeah. which is your trigger finger. Okay. You have really fast responses on your trigger finger, so if you grab anything, that trigger finger wants to grab hold. So if it's pitch black and you grab that, you always know that the blade is pointing down when you get your finger in that notch. Okay. So you only have to hold on to it, stick it in anything. If anything moves, if, that, if the assailant moves or if you move, it's going to cut and bleed. Right. That's it. You don't have to stab it in and out, in and out. Any kind of movement's going to cut and bleed. Man, that's a weird thing to, to be ready thought. for. Yeah, um, The website, in case people want to look at what we're talking about, is Civilware, is the company, Civilware.co. Civilware.co.com. You've sold out of the Striker. Everybody bought it. It's selling really, really well. It's doing good. A lot of people we actually can't make them quick enough. They're handmade down in San Diego um, by a legendary knife maker. Wow. Or whatever that's worth. It's just such a random thing to. It's sick though, right? To be like, into. To make your own knife and have it in your pocket. You go, okay, I designed this knife. Rad. Do you have it? In, do you have your knife with you on the streets? Uh sometimes, yes. Obviously, you take it off when you're about to film a trick because you don't want to fall one, right? Yeah, I don't. I mean, do it's that. not going to stab you, but it's going to hurt your hip. It could cut your leg off, I think. <laughs> do you have axes and stuff in your under your pillow? Uh, we do. We did a collab axe with a friend of mine and a friend of yours, a base camp, Graham Cameron. Yeah, and we did yeah those guys make cool shit. There's crazy thing. My girlfriend was into it. She's like, check these guys out. So I start following them. Yeah. And they're like, hey, man. What? And I'm like, hey, man, what, me? Yeah. And then they're like, hey, you want an axe? I'm like, do I want a fucking axe? Of course I want an axe. That was pretty much the same thing. I'm look, I looked at him and I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. Hey, reached out to him. What's going on, man? Repeat, like, hey, do you want an axe? Fuck, let's do this. Fly out. Let's hang out. Let's they, go do this, man. They make crazy. No, he's, he's a good dude. Looking weapons there. He's a good dude. But yeah, that's it, man. I'd like to make guns, though. That's actually what I'd like to do. That seems pretty tough, right? Yeah. I feel like the government would, like, if you try to make a gun, wouldn't people try to stop you from making guns? Because it's like a tobacco company almost. I think it's definitely an uphill struggle. They, like, stop you. In California. Because then you'd be taking money from them. 
depends what state you're in. And I don't think I don't see it as them taking you taking money from it. You're nurturing the uh, United States well, you, of America. You don't see it that way, but I think they would see it that way. They just come across as the tobacco company to me. I'm not saying that they're killing people. Are you, are you talking about the state of California? I'm saying guns <laughs> uh, in general. It yeah. seems like something that they're, they're the government and gun control, the people that make guns, they're all together, and they're not going to allow somebody else to come in and make another gun that might, say, outsell one of their guns, therefore not allow them to make as much money as they're already making. All like, the more reason to go at them. Like, if you and I were to start a cigarette company, yeah. I think that the big cigarette companies would go, uh, nah, yeah. fuck you and your good idea. We'll take your good idea and then we'll kick it to the cub. Right, right. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a reason, right, why there's a government agency that's tobacco, alcohol, and firearms. Yeah, it's yeah, like, those okay, guys. Okay, we've got these three things that eh, they could arguably all be illegal. So let's, we, stick, let's rope them together so yeah. they're all wrong. Yeah, so obviously right. we can't put them under the jurisdiction of, yeah, like if the Department of Health got uh, cigarettes, you probably would not see cigarettes on the shelves anymore. So if we make this department and we put guns and alcohol and tobacco, then they could just be in their own little camp over there. And I think you're right. It would be probably pretty difficult to break into that. Gives, gives them a reason to do their research and pass more laws that make it hard for law-abiding citizens to live a healthy, respectful life and protect their family. With cigarettes. Yeah. No, you could put one hand <laughs> on me when you're a sailor. I'm talking about particularly firearms right there. I was struck um, looking into your uh, past, Jeff. I, you and Jason, I was telling you this at the beginning of the show, I think have certain things in common about your past. For example, I saw that you, when you bought your first skateboard, it was not in a skate shop. That's right. It was from Probe Records in Liverpool, England. Mine was from Max Water Skate World. All right. Water Skate <laughs> Shop. So I take it there probably weren't skate shops. There was no skate shop in the city at the time. There was just a record shop. That Did you have magazines of skateboarding when you started? We got Power Edge. See, I didn't have... I heard about a guy. That had the mag. I heard... No, I heard about a guy that skateboarded in America that did a finger flip. His name was Tony Hawk. Okay. Never saw... A, never put the face to a name until uh, much later. I believe magazine and the video Future Primitive... Or might have, because that's how old Australia just didn't have it. There was already a Bones Brigade video that had already existed. Then the second one came out, and that was the first one that I got to see. Almost like I got into Metallica when Justice for All started. I missed, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Justice for All. And then they're like, you know, there's like, there's two more. And I'm like, oh my God. It was kind of like that. Yeah, it was pretty much like that. You had to really, really, really want to do it to find the product yeah, yeah, or yeah. to find. A magazine. That made it cooler, like man. There's more mystique. This is a guy named Tony Hawk that can do a finger flip. I'm like, finger flip what? How's that even make any sense? He lets go of it and then grabs it again while it's flipping? Bullshit. Yeah. And then there was a sequence of it, and I'm like, fuck me. It wasn't even the tricks that got me. It was what I was looking at. I didn't know what I was. That first skate video I saw was a contest. It was called Savannah Slammer in yes. Georgia. And I had a recording of a recording of a recording that was filmed through somebody's ass. Christian and Zoe had hair extensions in that contest. Everyone had hair extensions. Everyone looked so rad in that one. They had makeup, <laughs> lipstick, nail varnish, bandanas, <laughs> headbands. This was like Kiss era. Dude, Christian had fucking like yellow lycra pants on and straight, like he, he had your hair length. Mm -hmm. And then the next weekend, his hair went past his ass. And he was, and he was waving it around like a girl. It, sounds it like was amazing. It sounds like you're describing the ultimate warrior. Yes, but shorter and more wrestling. like Asian looking. And <laughs> higher air uh, too. More yeah. aerial. Yeah, he was <laughs> quite a talent too. Yeah. And then you both, I'm guessing there wasn't that much of a skate scene at all in, in England. You came to Southern California around about the same time Jason did. And uh, this more lived up to, it lived up to the hype that you both expected. Um, I, I came July 2nd, 1994, I think two years after the Huntington Beach riots. Straight to Main Street in Huntington Beach. Um, Quite a culture shock. I don't know what your first experience was, but my first experience was I got off the plane, right, uh, with my partners at Flip, and we went and met Per Wellander at a Denny's, mm. and then we went down to Second Street, which is parallel to Main Street, hunting the beach. I walked out the door, across the road. A cop said, "Hey, you, where are you going?" So I'm going for a walk. Said, no, you're not. Get back inside the house. I'm like, get back inside the house. What do you mean? Mm. He's like, how old are you? I said, 18. He's like, get in the house now. I'm like. Okay, like I'm it's pitch black. I'm like, should I just give this cop a run for his money? Nah, I'm going back in the house, man. Yeah. I went straight back inside the house, and that was my first experience with the United States of America. Love this country. 
Mine was, I got off the plane and, uh, and I'm like, wow, look at all the cars. They're like the ones in movies. And then I got a ride to this the H ramp or something. And it was the first, it was a mini ramp that had, had hip, a hip on it. And I'd never seen two ramps next to each other. So you could actually transfer from one ramp to the other. And so I'm just kidding the candy store riding this ramp going, I can't fucking believe this. It was a, it was there was like more than one mini ramp. You could literally go from one to the other. I was it was so amazing. There was, I don't even think there was a mini ramp in Australia yet. So first of all, I'm seeing a mini ramp, which is half the size of a boat ramp, and there's four of them, and they're all joined to each other, and you can just fly around. And the first pro skateboard I saw was uh, a guy, Jimmy Mar- Martinez, Martinez, also known as Jinx. And he was a steaming pile of shit of a skateboarder. I worked with Jenks for years. But he was, them. but he had a big board. It was like a big skateboard that I'd seen in stores, and and I'm like, holy shit, that's Jinx! Like the first real American skateboarder that pay, gets paid to skate is standing here right now. That was in flesh and bone. Yeah, right there. blew your mind, expanded. And your then the universe. donut store. That's the next thing I remember. I do remember the neon lights being extremely overpowering. You can get any donut you want. It's yeah, super cheap. They give you a box, Michael, yeah, and you yeah. can just pick any donut, and they put them all in the box and give them to you. Even if you wanted 20, they would just give you 20 of them. Now, what, what, I mean, what number of donuts would they cap you at in Australia? Uh, I mean, I've never seen anyone eat more than four donuts in Australia. I've never seen anyone purchase more than one donut in England full stop. See? That's that's where we were. See, yeah. and, here, and here I was in New Jersey just completely taking donuts for granted. Yeah, you cocksuckers. We would just toss them on the ground willy-nilly. I <laughs> in no a, regard. It's impossible to eat 24 bonu- donuts. I don't understand. <laughs> what well, we would have done it. for a 24-hour donut shop with <laughs> coffee shop in Liverpool, England growing up. Oh, man, we just skated all night. Yeah. That's exactly what we would have done. Yeah, I think we did that anyway, just no donuts. Skate till you drop. So you make knives. What else do you do? Tell you saying that he... What else does he do? What other things do you Do you make coffee? Own? We make coffee, we make knives, we do some shirts and hats, but it's pretty much the tools that we're, we're focused on is just, you know, that, because that's kind of like the meat and potatoes of, like, what I enjoy working on. You know, I've worked on all kinds of skate product over the years, you know, whether it's shoes, clothing, all that stuff, traditional product, and uh, I'm just, I just enjoy it. It's fun, and I use the stuff, too. Like, I hunt so much now uh, in the last few years that I use the stuff that I, that I develop mm. out in the field constantly. So it's constantly getting new ideas, and that's one of the reasons why I want to. I'd like to at some point uh, make a gun because I have a, I have an idea for a design for you know a, a pocket 38 or 357 that I think would kind of freshen up the gun world, and that's something you just mentioned as well too. Like a lot of the larger gun manufacturers, they're all doing the same thing. They're all promoting themselves the same way. It's just like a lot of industries, and it's important that people come in from another industry with fresh ideas and maybe a little bit younger than they are, and kind of just go at that. So I'm just going to enjoy this and, and do it for you know for all it's worth. Is it weird being English and then trying to make guns in America? Isn't that Not really? Isn't that part of the American dream? You come from a foreign country, you move here, and you've got a lot of opportunity, and you'll be successful, and you keep going at that. Do you know how to make a gun? Not from scratch, no. no. You, you've got designs. I have ideas. Okay, you have develop, develop. I mean, I obviously need an engineer. That would be a good start. But you and an engineer could make a gun, you start firing bullets at people. Yeah. You know that much about it. I would find an engineer. You go I've hun- drawn guns before, I'd worked with firearms before, and I'd go through that. I know the design details that I think are lacking on some of the, some of the firearms that I'd like to see, and some of it's actually aesthetic too. Aesthetic and actually the way that the product is promoted. I mean, you see that a lot with tools. All tools are promoted as this strong, you know. Whatever. I mean, even our tagline, built for service, okay, that's the, the tough make- industrial side of things. But but really, the truth of it is, it's about product and developing the design and original product. You want to make and that a, takes more cool than one. Guns. Well, yeah. Cool yeah, guns, I want a they, shiny one, Michael. Sign me up. Not can just I, can colors, I be, guys. Can mine be very big, <laughs> too? I'd like a big, shiny gun. Big, big guns are good. Yeah, I want one that's loud, big, and shiny. Mm-hmm. One that's really hard to shoot. Yeah, I don't really care about that. I'm not going to shoot anybody. Super, I want, I want one phallic. that does all the work for me and is safe. <laughs> what kind of guns do you like? I like handguns. I like revolvers. 38, do you shoot? Do you go hunting with them? I do, yeah. You shoot the lions with the handguns? I shot one lion with a handgun. Do you go by yourself? 
Uh, no, I was with two older fellas, one 58, one 64, brothers. Yeah. In Colorado. And they're hounds, man. And they've been hunting lions since they were young kids. That's who I hunt with in Colorado. And in, uh, in Arizona, um, I hunt dry ground lion hunting, which is in the desert, not in the snow. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, with a friend that's down uh, near Tucson, another friend that's near Camp Verde in northern Arizona. And that's mostly off mule horseback. You're on a on a on a donkey. Something like that. Yeah. You ride a donkey and you shoot Beautiful. cats. And well, then I don't you ride a donkey cat. through the hills shooting cats wildly with neon lights flashing. No. Well, I'm sure you don't wear <laughs> You're neon the lights. Picture, Jason. You're painting the picture, Jason. You paint the crazy. Look, I'm, I'm, the picture I was painting was trying. To, it was actually starting to get exciting. I was yeah. going to join you. Do you wear a poncho? Yeah. Do you wear a poncho? You definitely wear the right equipment. <laughs> no poncho. No punch. So it's kind of like a new generation of hunter because I'm more yeah. of a. Uh, do you ever seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson? I have. Seen of course that, you yeah. have. Yeah. If you're a fucking hunter, of course you have. I have seen. That's that. how I would roll. Is that that's exactly not, how you roll? That's exactly how I roll because I don't fucking like anybody, Jeff. Just so if I'm gonna hide, to do it by myself. Get out a bunch of animal hides, a load of stockpile of food and guns and weapons and knives. Yeah. Go up into a cabin, stay there. If anyone tries to take you out, take them down. The blaze of glory. Yeah. All yeah. day long. Have you ever killed a bear? I haven't, no. I actually would have you, a tag would you... this season for a bear in the local mountains. Around what here. is that, a tag that means a license to kill a bear? Yes. See, but you're going to kill a bear with a gun. I'd like to. Yeah, see, to me, I've always thought if you're going to kill a bear, that you should be allowed to have a shield and a sword. Uh, I'm not sure. You're a pretty that. ballsy guy. Would you be willing to do that? You could make the sword. I'm not stupid enough you could to make just the walk. shield. I'm not stupid enough to just go, hey, I'm going to go kill a bear with a knife. Well, do some right? Google it first and then go out there with a the, with the shield and a sword. But I believe you're a fast guy. You're an athlete. You don't think you're fast enough to kill a bear with a sword? I think it's possible, yes. And I think at some point in my life, if given the opportunity, that I might take that. I believe you. You got with a dark that, side, man. With absolute respect. It gets all weird, like, uh, you know, in, intruder fucking shoot. Yeah, I was curious what. Cat thing. Like, uh, of course it's a real threat. Somebody could come into your house. But there's all sorts of real threats that we all face every single day. I just saw the Center for Disease Control uh, confirm the first case of Ebola in America today. Where, where is it? Uh, Monrovia? No. I what don't that think mean? Glendale? I don't think it's quite that Burbank? close. Burbank? <laughs> uh, where is this person? Um, in uh, Dallas. In Dallas? Right. So... Are you very concerned about Ebola? Will you take steps? Dallas is a big city. Right. Very large city. Yeah. That's scary. Well, my point my point is there's so many threats, existential threats yeah. to all of us all the time. It's right. telling the one thing that we choose to become very concerned and why do you think you are particularly concerned about the threat of home invasion? Uh, it's everyday life. It's an everyday threat. So there's lots of things. Have that's, you been That's right. That's have true, you been invaded? you can't protect yourself from absolutely everything, but you can do what it takes to protect your family, your immediate family and do stuff within your means. Have you been invaded? Uh, well, they tried. The Germans tried to invade England, but they failed. Personally, have you been invaded? I haven't been invaded like that, Jason. Do you have a close friend that's been invaded? Uh, I do, yeah. All the houses around my house have all been broken into. Different wow. times of the day and night. Uh, I've had people down my back side of my house in the dark that shouldn't be there. So, yeah, it's an immediate threat. I have a four-year-old son and... Uh, uh, a beautiful fiance who's only a hundred pounds. Right. If anyone tries to mess with them, they're going down. End Fair enough. What about? I will cross you off my list of homes to invade. Yeah. What about? <laughs> Good idea. Uh, do you have road rage or anything like that, Jeff? No. No, I'm pretty mellow on the road. Do you roads, get man. into what about security that try to stop you from skating? Have you ever punched one of them in the face or say? Smashed one of them in the head with your skateboard? I have not, Jason. Not no. one time. Not one time. No. Have you been in a dispute with security? No, I like to respect authority. Oh, he's fucking lying. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. You're lying. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like... So, it's so funny. Like, I've known him for so long, but I've never, like, had an hour of conversation with the guy. I just feel like Jeff's like, Hey, how's it going? Fucking in English. I mean, everybody's cool. And he's, like, fucking dark. You're, like, ready to go, man. I'm from Liverpool, Jason. What's that got yeah. to do with it? Do you headbutt so, so people is, when so you so fight? Do you headbutt? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? So is Paul McCartney. He's the last. That's actually a really good comeback on that one because he's about as soft as it gets. Yeah. He's a vegan. Maybe that's oh, what he's it is. awful, man. He's terrible. He's one of those people who's so righteous and soft. I think his ass is polished. You know? It's one of them kind of scenarios where you look and go, man, look, you're in such a place of power. Mm -hmm. Just stop putting out the flowers. Put down something with meaning. Give me something to believe in. 
Like Lennon had. Lennon had a punk side to him. Yeah. Yeah. But he was angry. Yeah, he was. A he didn't bit. seem happy. He had a pretty, you know? I think, a pretty bad family life, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of them, shit fucked with him. One of them father figure failure kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah. He wasn't around and all that stuff. Yeah. What about you? You get that? I, you got parents? I have great parents, man. Normal people? Beautiful people. They Nobody smacked you other. around or anything? Nah. I mean, I, 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 I'm growing up, obviously. I was in, like, fights growing up, right? I ass kick growing up in school and yeah. on the streets and stuff like that. I'd seen some nasty stuff growing up in the city that's pretty grimy. Yeah. You know, I saw some pretty foul things. You know, I had a knife pulled on me when I was 12, you know? Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, but no, I, I'm blessed with my family. I do nothing but beautiful love for them. Being English, do you headbutt people when you fight? Because English people always headbutt me when I fight them. No. No, I think I have before in self-defense. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a trademark. It's what they do. It's their go-to move. It's in the blood. Well, yeah. that, that's, I mean, in England, it's it's mostly hands, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's like the street fighting side. Yeah. There's no cameras in the city then. You know, now there's cameras the whole of England. In fact, it's a it's a poster child for intrusion, right? On yeah. the streets, public intrusion. Yeah, the public signed off on allowing Big Brother into their lives in England. Yeah, and it did actually affect people going out on the weekends and just getting all crazy and wild. In the good way, a lot mm-hmm. of it too. Sure. But whereas, grow- whereas here in America, we would never let the government put cameras everywhere. We've just chosen to all carry them ourselves and film everything at all times, which has the exact same effect. Nah, somewhat. But at least they don't have it. You have it. Have you ever beat up a skateboarder? Uh, beat up a skate. A beat up. Got in a like, fight with a skateboarder. I've been in fights with skateboarders before. Yeah. Anybody so, I know? Uh, Heath Kirchhart, maybe. Oh, yeah, I can see that. He's pretty annoying. But, uh, well, that was just one of them, yeah. You were on tour together? Did you guys ever tour together? I think you did, no, right? No, we didn't. He's the raddest, too. This is when we, was young, we were younger. Right. Um, I got in a little thing with him then, and that was because he was just kind of calling me out with somebody else. And well, Let's not talk about this, because these are great people. I didn't say he was a bad person. I've punched people in the face before that I like. Yeah. Doesn't feel good, does it? Well. No, it's not like, it's not like, I, You know what? I've never punched anybody <laughs> in the face on the street. I usually, I mean, it's like a boxing thing. Like, I beat Andy Bell. You know, I tried to, I tried to knock Who's him that? out. I was too tired. Who's that? He's a moto Canadian guy, Nitro Circus guy. Uh, friends with Travis. Good guy. Yeah. Solid bloke. Yeah. We, we went at it. Wild on the I loved him for it. We, were, we became closer ever since that day. Yeah. No, I, I, honestly, I mean, in all, in all fairness, like, I always felt, you know, in those kind of situations, someone attacks you, someone, or someone punches you, or someone threatens you. Yeah. You want to stop that threat. That's it. What about mixed martial arts? I've never done anything like You'd that. You'd be though. good at it. He's super... So. Fu- fuck yeah, dude. You're one of the most athletic I, people I've ever met. Honestly. Wow, that's a huge compliment. I really... I always thought that. When watching you skateboard, I always thought... I'm like, man, if I had that agility... Agility? Like... Fuck yeah. I always yeah. thought you were really agile. More than anybody... You know, I'm not around it anymore. I don't watch anybody's videos. I really, I really don't give a fuck. And, and but when I was when I did give a fuck and I watched everybody do everything, I thought you were the most agile guy in skateboarding. Man, well I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I mean I have pretty much hobbit's feet. Fast as shit. He would go <laughs> fucking a hundred mile an hour and try something. If it fucked up, he could just like untangle himself and run out of it. Right? I like going fast and I like falling when I'm going fast too. And then when I fall when I'm going fast, I like to get up and skate even faster. Yeah, he does that. <laughs> I saw that. I remember seeing that. I like to fall on my face. I like to grind my teeth. I like everything. These are the perks of the job. <laughs> you should get him in a fight at Ellis Mania. He needs it. You need to get oh, it out of your uh, chest. I need to get the ass kicked. My shit kicked out of me, right? That would be good for yeah. you. I Probably think you need a, to get it out. I agree with you. A good slam can really shake you up for the day and wake you up. And you can perform all kinds of special moves after that. When I was good, that was the that was when I was warmed up it wouldn't i wouldn't be ready until i'd fucking knock the snot out of myself i used to say it i would like and i'd fucking like i would like usually the one the ones i remember where i would get like a snot would come out of my face because i hit my body so hard and it'd be like i uh, like wipe the snot off my face be like yep all right now we can start doing some real skateboarding here because before i was a little stiff needed to get that first one out of the way that's always the way man one one good fall on the face that'll really settle you out I there missed my go. face. I hit my dick. It's I've fucking been, impossible, I've hit my right? Dick a couple of times. It's actually really pain. When you get the ones where it just dangles and whacks the ground before you fall, that's only happened to me twice. And the two times I did it, <sighs> baseball bat to the balls, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds awful. Yeah, uh, someone... a lot worse than getting kicked in the balls. Different. 
Getting kicked in the balls is not that bad. Yeah. It's usually up your ass most of the time, you know? Yeah. There's just that sweet spot. It's not about how hard... The worst deviations to the scrotum... Squashing the gotten, nut. The worst I've ever gotten weren't um, weren't the hardest I've ever gotten. That's right. One time... Flick I mean, to the nut could one, be even worse. One time a guy tossed me... A, I believe it was a tennis ball. At its peak, it was probably 12 to 15 feet in the air. You mm. could not toss a ball more gently. I didn't realize he has tossed it to me. It came down completely unobstructed, got me right on that spot. One was, ball. That was the worst nut shot I've ever had in my entire life. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the family jewels are very sensitive. You've got to take care of them. I think the worst one I've ever had is falling so far and landing on my knees and my balls swinging into the inner thigh. And that hurt <laughs> more than anybody kicking me in the dick. That one has, that was like one of the most, I, and, it didn't, and I didn't realize, so I thought maybe I'd tore my sack or something, like landing... And then go, man, that was really bad. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, what the fuck? I figured out, I did some uh, research and thought, you know what that was? That was uh, my balls pendulum oh into my the goodness. side of my leg. Very rare occurrence. It happens once every 10 years. That's why you've got to always not go for it until you warmed up. Because when you warm up, Mark, you might not know this, but when you become athletic and you start doing an actual I know. sport, I know your doing. shit shrivels up into you. Therefore, being prepared for yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you can't do it with a casual scrotum. You can't just, like, on a hot day, just, like, go action Jackson in three seconds. Because your dick and balls are not ready for it. And that's oh. when they start swinging and smashing into stuff. Yeah, just the right kind of uh, bounce. Enough about dick and balls. Enough about dick and balls. Eric, you've got a question. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Keep the energy up. More importantly, somebody is calling to help you make a gun, Jeff. Oh, wonderful. Is it Michael? No, it's Michelle. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, read. Michelle. Stay in school. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from San Diego. California. That's a good there you start. Go. Gonna be near, she's going to be nearby. You guys can make this gun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So not an actual firearm. North County. What, what's his name? Okay. Well, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Wait, you're not going to take her up on it? Yeah. I'm having a hard time here, and it feels I'm like gonna I'm going to put her on hold. I'm going to get eyes. your info. Hang on a minute. Yeah, please do that before I'm going to get that great. info, Jeff, because you need to make your own gun, and you're I want to be. I want to say to my. I want to say later on when I see on Instagram, you know, what I mean, rally rifles or whatever it is, and he's fucking shooting everything that moves. Mm -hmm. and we're like, I fucking help them connect with that gun. Hopefully, I can get like a free one, like an anodized shiny one that like it's really loud and terrible. Obviously, yeah. yeah. We need more guns in California. When you uh, when you brutally uh, <laughs> annihilate uh, a home invader with this gun, I want to know that I played some small part in making that. What about a knife on the end of the gun, like people in World War Two and shit? That's, <laughs> that's a gun. Very, that's very English. Yeah. Now you're talking. That's up your alley, right? It's like a folding knife, but it's actually a firearm. Because then, if you think about it, if the intruder comes in and you get out of bed and you stab him with the knife gun, yeah, he's not going anywhere, Michael, and he has the option to either shut the fuck up and wait right. for the authorities to come, or I'll fucking shoot you while you're post no, while I've shish kebabbed your fucking sh your you kidneys. Could, you could use the blade to open up a hole, thereby Just... creating a wound into which to fire the bullet. Wouldn't that more than likely he's peeing himself while you while you you know going down this route? Wouldn't that defeat the purpose <laughs> if we were to cut a hole all the way through, shooting no, a hole? Open it up to the to the. Oh, so you could get in right the in there with the bullet. Don't waste any of the trajectory on the skin. What about uh, blow darts? Have you ever been into <laughs> blow darts? No, I haven't. I haven't. I know nothing about blow darts. What about bow and arrows and crossbows? Have you ever hunted anybody like that way? I've, I've used compound bows and traditional archery. I've shot a little bit, but not How are they much. for you? Uh, I'm okay. Not the same thing? or No, I like a hang I like handgun just because of the uh, packability and accessibility. 
So, and also, they're all, they're really tough too in, in cold weather and higher elevations. They do really well. If you drop them in snow, you can kind of clean them out a little bit, or if you, you know, drop them in water, they're easier mechanically to make sure that they're going to function than, right. than a lot of other firearms and a lot of the higher elevation mountain hunt that I do in places that I'm at. I prefer to have that. A lot of times my hands are freezing cold. I want a heavy gun. I don't want a really light semi-automatic. I don't want a Glock. I want a revolver. Right. I want one piece of steel. Do you wear gloves when you're out there? Sometimes. Do you have like a like a taxi driver set up? Like where you just have like you know what I mean the jet like one in here and one in there and one in there. How many uh, handguns do you have when you go uh, hunting these beasts? I usually just one, and I shoot cross draw, which is a cross yourself like that because I'm left-handed. Wait. And, uh, Cross, so you have it holstered on the right side, and then I handle it with the left. So you, you, reach, you reach across your body. To I reach across it. the body to pull it out. Are you holster. quick to draw, or is this like a part of the part of the fun? Like are you like, do you pull and shoot immediately when you kill your prey? No, not generally. No. So you just have it there, and then you're like, fuck, I see one. I have it. I have it there because a lot of times when you pull it, pull it out, cross draw like that, it kind of guides itself straight to where you would be shooting. So you no. do shoot pretty quickly then? Uh, no, generally actually not. Usually you'd like to see what's in front of you before you take a shot. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know, and if I'm not comfortable with that, I won't take the shot. And and there's a lot of ethics involved with that, with that side of it too. You know, you don't want to make a bad shot on anything. Um, and, and also, you want to give everything the respect that it's deserved. There's no going out and just shooting and shooting and shooting and, shooting and laughing about it. It's, it's completely ethical and, and uh, you know, a lot of it is, it's all legal too. You kill the cat, um, you don't want him to be in pain? No. So you try to get him in the head? You try to kill him as, you don't as eat ethically them. and quickly as you can. Yeah, you can, you can eat mountain lion, it's really good. You do eat it? Yeah. I would eat, I would eat a mountain lion. For sure. Do you yeah. wear any of it? Uh, you could, yeah. You I don't? Mean, I have, they have dew claws, which are... You know, on their arm, which they use to hunt and take down animals with. They use it to get a good grip on deer on their around their neck area, so that yeah. they can grab on and bite their neck and break their neck and kill them. Um, those huge claws, they yeah. call them the killing claw. They make beautiful jewelry. You, uh, yeah. Do you have like a? Do you yeah. have that as a necklace or whatever? Uh, my mother has one. You gave it to your mom. And my lady's mother, she has the other one. Wait, you've only got you've only got one one cat to your. One cat, yeah. That's the only yeah. cat you've killed? Yeah. Only one? Only one. One female in Colorado. That was About it? 125 pound female, which is a good size. Right. Man. You want you Give me a couple of years and call okay. me back. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I thought you had racked up more numbers. Right? Yeah, you seem like a cold-blooded blooded murderer that just goes out into the snow and just pistol whips fucking cats all over quite the, the opposite but i'm very serious so you're doing it um for us because there's there's too many cats no i wouldn't put it in that broader category i'm doing it for me because i enjoy it and love it but at the same time it's legal and it serves a purpose cool and that purpose is keeping the numbers in check it predatory numbers in check so that they don't overcome the prey which can happen and right now we have that problem in california of course too many mountain lions in the mountains and there's not enough deer yeah. Because the mountain lions are eating them and ravishing them. And joggers, which I'm okay with. And there sheep. are also far too many joggers. Yeah, those people are annoying. Like Runyon, I wish that fucking those cats would just eat the shit out of all those assholes up there. They make it smell like shit. Yeah, by killing that mountain lion, you may have spared as many as four or five joggers' lives. So yeah. I, say, I, say, do? I say damn you. <laughs> I'm bear in mind we're having this huge conversation, but hunting mountain lions in California is actually illegal right now. Oh, okay. Um, so in this state... It's not legal to pursue a mountain lion. Really. Can you kill a coyote in California? You can. Oh, that's around. good news. What about a wolf? There's no wolves in California. And you know what? If they put wolves in California, we might as well all just leave. Why? There's not going to be any game. They're so intelligent. Did you know that wolves... Well, remember that Remember that story about Yellowstone Park? That wolves actually made Yellowstone Park better? Yes. Did you know that, Jeff Rowley? You mean by decimating the elk herds? No. Yes. No. No, they did not decimate. <laughs> They... By, by reintroducing a larger wolf that didn't historically occur in that area. No. And, and you wonder yes. whether that's no, going to have an adverse <laughs> effect on the game population. No, that's not what I'm... No, there's an actual fact that the wolves that came to Yellowstone Park uh, operated in an area where it kept the deer from being in these dense areas where it actually then flourished 
and started growing, therefore bringing more uh, uh, rabbits and squirrels and other things that, that started to build, flourishing, therefore changing the rivers of Yellowstone Park, making it a better environment for all. That is a scientific fact that so, I just learned recently, Jeff Rowley. Or are you opposed to rivers? Uh, yeah, sounds do like you... a proper <laughs> shit to me, and I'll tell you what, the, the whole wolf thing just sounds like a publicity scam. You know, tourism numbers go up like crazy, elk herds go down. Who wins? I'm going to play you something, Jeff Rowley. You might need to... Uh, it, this, here's a little lesson for you. Okay. That's a wolf, by the way, Jeff. Beautiful sounds. Maybe I should play this after. <laughs> it's pretty long. It does go on a bit. God, get to it, dude. Hang on a second. When he gets to it. This is not a joke, Jeff. This is you can Google it, it's real. Okay. Not lying. I'm not lying. Jeff, you would be one of those less aware. <laughs> Lucky me. They were terrified. Yeah, let's say Jeff. Quintupled Jeff. You like beavers, Jeff, I'm assuming. Beavers are a problem. <laughs> Ecosystem engineers. Fish. America. Is this sponsored by the Humane Society? What's going on right here? I love berries. Yeah, Jeff. You get the you get the gist. I get the gist. It's or a crock of shit. Maybe you're proper. How is it maybe a crock of shit? Emotion. And who's, what fucking knife is that? There's a reason why wolves were kind of uh, hunted very prolifically for a, a long period of time when people first started settling this country. Mm -hmm. wow. They were super intelligent. They bred really quick, and they decimate pretty much anything they come in contact with. You saying that guy's a liar? That guy's a liar. For sure. Just like that. Just by hearing some audio, you're like, that is not true. That did not happen. That did not happen, in my humble opinion. Fair enough. I mean, scientifically proven, but then again, scientists could be lying. Maybe God is real and dinosaurs never existed. Possible. 
I just like to, I just feel like, okay, scientist guy, you're telling me wolves are cool. Why? Yeah. What does it benefit? Because usually when people are lying, it's some, It's very easy to, there's like uh, some sort of benefit. They're going to get something out of it, money or fucking Yeah, there's free money shit. involved. There's a lot of money involved. <laughs> By keeping when, wolves around. When you talk about wolves and, and bigger animals like black bears and pandas and things, people have an over an overabundance of, uh, what's the word for it? Um, I think pandas should die. Empathy. Too much empathy in yep. the world. Look, I, I think that pandas should... They, it's, it's very apparent to me that they cannot handle it. They cannot handle the world as we know it right but now. But wolves can handle it. Uh, actually, wolves can handle what about it to Yellowstone? a point where they're a big problem when there's a lot of big cities near where they live. What about Yellowstone? Just that one spot. Would you be okay with letting the wolves exist there after hearing that audio? I'm okay with wolves existing in certain ecosystems in, in the United States. Just not everywhere. I'm not using... Uh, the the pressure from the general public to decide those things. It's, it shouldn't be about tourism. It shouldn't be about money. It shouldn't be just about science. It should be about practical science. And a lot of that is different regionally. So I don't yeah. think you can. Yeah, you're right. You know, paint a bigger picture. You have to look at it in these small pockets. And I agree. And, and with the larger predators, if you look at it any other way, you're getting the wrong. You're going down the wrong wrong route. Right. And that is scientific. Now you can read. I've read a lot of the major studies on on, uh, on mountain lions in the United States from all the universities in New Mexico and California and Arizona, and you do see that regional difference between in those ecosystems between the same species of animal. Hmm. So how do you manage that? Would you go to Africa and kill lions and I've shit been there? I've to Africa before, but I haven't hunted in Africa. Um, I, I would. Um, Sounds good to you. It sounds good to me, but I'm, I'm not the dude that's just going to go, oh, I want to kill this, oh, I'm going to kill that one, oh, I want to go after that, I want to go after this. It's slow and steady with me. I like learning the animal, understanding what they're doing and how they work within that ecosystem. And, and kind of, like right now, I'm focused on bear in the local mountains, right. uh, in the San Bernardino Mountains. And I have a very good friend of mine, Jake Franklin, who's one of the best guides in the world. Uh, and uh, he's helping me uh, with that. Uh, so that's kind of like my focus right now, and it was my focus last year and this year during the hunting season. I didn't take a bow last year, um, and hopefully I'll get one this year. But it's not really, a, it's not really just about that for me. It's actually the knowledge, right. the conservation. Side. Sounds like it. Sounds like you're doing your research. I myself cannot read, so I just have to take your word for it. I love reading. I would kill an orangutan at the zoo because he looked very sad, and I feel like I needed to uh, end his pain. That might be a good decision. You could become, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, quite the YouTube sensation if you mercy killed animals in zoos. I mean, he seriously was begging me to kill him. You know how you can see it, you know? Yeah, like he's a monkey, he's half a man. Yeah. And he's looking at me like, no. dude, Give me what I'm doing right now is fucking uncool on <laughs> such a level. Yeah. And there's like, oh, take a photo, take a photo. And, he's, and he looked over at me and was like, this is what I do. Yeah, he's looking this back at you. This is what I fucking like, do, man. Like the old man in the Metallica Unforgiven video. The, yes, uh, what's her name? <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of Marion Faithful. Marion yeah. Faithful, yeah. Right. Hideous old man. Just that guy, yeah. Begging to die. <laughs> <laughs> Once I begged Mick Jagger, and now I'm this sad old man. <laughs> Are you cool with Mick Jagger? Oh, I don't know much about the dude. He's a little bit flamboyant for me. Yeah, he does dance funny and he has weird pants. I He's a little bit 60 40. What's that mean? A little more feminine than masculine. Oh, okay, right. Wait, are you okay with gays and lesbians? I'm okay with gays and lesbians. You just you just asked me if I like Mick Jagger, but I was I mean I didn't I mean like him like to date him. Hey but man, if Michael asked me if I like Mick Jagger, I don't I'm not assuming that he wants me to fuck him. I'm just assuming yeah. if I'm a Mick Jagger fan or not. Yeah, totally. He, nah, he shops right. for pants in little girls' departments. <laughs> he definitely does. He doesn't have an ass neither. They're really tiny really, balls either. He's, he's got he, really tiny pants. <laughs> <laughs> he is half the man half, like from the net from the waist down, he's half the size of you. His head is probably as big as his legs. But then I like Queen, you know, I like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, no, how can you not? He's flamboyant, but it's different. Mm -hmm. He wore man pants. Less flowery. Yeah, no, and he was like, <laughs> more. he was a better, he was more of a talent. Uh, I hate saying that, but really, he was. He yeah. was better at... He was a better for all-around entertainer. Yeah, he was the greatest, I think he's the greatest rock and roll singer that ever lived. Fantastic. In my opinion. Yeah, fantastic voice. One of the greats. He yeah. died. He's dead now. It happens. You gotta it watch to out. all the greats eventually. It does. Yeah. He should have wore a rubber. Yeah. yeah. He was a little dirty, wasn't he? Hindsight being... He was a little filthy on the side. It's one of those guys. Like, they raw dog each other. They don't really care. Long nights. Yeah. yeah long. Dude, long night. I understand. I've had long nights before where I was... You know what I mean? Uh, I, I bumped into the wrong chick and... 
Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the option was not, I did not have a, uh, a rubber, and for some reason I got lucky, because it could have could have been just the same monster. A rainy night in Nantucket. Slept some, next thing some you know. serious bush pigs. Never did that? Were you ever a whore, Jeff Rowley? No, I was never a whore. Good for you. Thank you. And you got to be proud of that. Oh man, I've always, I've always, I've always looked for a long-standing relationship, you know? So was I. Yeah. I was just a whore as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I paid the price, the I paid the was... price. Everybody else around me paid the price too. Very sorry. Yeah, I apologize. You now, Jason, for that. You're great. You're doing great. You've got a beautiful right. family. I do. I have a great family. But I don't have a wife because I'm a whore. Uh, what else? Yeah, things are good. Things are good with you. I've got to tell you, it was uh, very flattering to for you to hit me up on Instagram and to even want to reach out to me. I've always looked up to you as a skateboarder. You're a great talent. And uh, judging from what you're still doing, this is a... Um, inspiring to anybody out there that wants to be something in their lives. Look what Jeff Rowley has done. Thank you very much. You've accomplished so much and you're not done. You're still going 38 and you're bleeding internally. And I would say for me at 38, I'm filming a skateboard video, I went to hospital four times. This is where I start cussing out my skateboard and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start skateboarding. I woke up in a Nobody pool of blood me. this morning. My whole, my no, I have a gnarly nosebleed while I was sleeping, just bleeding all out of my face. I, you know why those things happen to you on the occasion when you're... You didn't it. accidentally stab yourself in your sleep. Or accidentally do a bunch of blow when you're <laughs> in your sleep. Not that long <laughs> that, I've, I've woke up a couple of times with my pillow covered in blood and I knew exactly why. Mm. Well, I've been doing cocaine in my sleep. Again. I didn't, my biggest mistake was not switching nostrils halfway through the evening. Rookie. Need more. <laughs> no, I've never, been, I've never been down that side. I'm pretty... Uh, the, that's what it is. You've never been down that side, and that's there. You go, kids. I went down that side. I'm on the radio. Jeff didn't go down that side. Jeff is still a professional skateboarder at a high level. That's what happens when you abuse yourself with drugs and alcohol. You fucking dry up and turn into a piece of shit. I can't do it anymore, dude. I literally cannot take the hit and walk around the next day. I understand it, man. It's, it's fucking gnarly. dried up. Yeah, I, I dried it. up my talents. I'm the same way. Like I don't like I used to go into skate days and filming days and stuff I wanted to do that I was scared to do. I used to go into those sessions kind of like almost aggressively, get a prepare like, okay, all right, I'm ready for this. Let's do it. Not really sleep that good the night before because a lot of the times what I was skating was something I might die on or something. You know, when you skate those roof gaps and stuff a lot because I've skated a lot of that stuff like a little more regular than maybe I probably should have. Right. You know, uh, it's not like that anymore. Now I'll go into it like just super quiet, relaxed, and then when I start skating, it comes out. Where I'm like, let's do this. It's gonna happen, but you lose that aggressive man thing when you've been hit so hard right. so many times. You've been on the ground so many times. You've bled so many times and had so many broken bones and surgeries and seen so much weird stuff out there. I've seen some nasty slams, man. I've seen a guy tear his urethra. You remember that one, Stacy Lowry? I know Stacy Larry. Yeah, he's Stacey's great. a rad dude. He tore his urethra. Yeah, he's bleeding out the end of his penis at a skate spot with like three, just three of us. I think it was me, Mike Fillaly, Kurt Deander, Stacy Lowry, and I think that was it. And we went straight to Mike, Mike's house. But listen to this, man. He slammed on the rail, sacked it, like those sack rail sacks you see on every YouTube People who video. don't know what that means, yeah, the rail. You, you straddle you the fall, rail. Yeah. You straddle the rail. No the feet involved here. No feet, all balls on the rail. He did that, and he's like a six foot two six foot four dude right and he stood up and blood started just gushing through his jeans thick like a horror movie holy shit wait a minute yeah. you went to mike's house after that you didn't we go went to, to mike's him. house after that and then we're like no I mean, you probably want to go to the hospital he went there and had emergency surgery and he you know his his goods were a little damaged for a little while but my point was you see all these slams and all this you become immune immune to it i'm sure a lot of fighters kind of get like that where they just get their crap beaten out of them so much either they did it intentionally they got in fights with people that they knew they weren't going to be able to beat just to do it mm. or they were successful in that but you just as you get older i feel you just become more comfortable in that space and you know i'm just thankful that i'm still skating and i'm thankful that i'm still here i'm sitting here with you guys and you know i've got a head and legs my face is numb from getting punched in the face all the time like i don't feel anything anymore when if it's right on the button it doesn't do anything i have to, if i don't see it coming then that'll do something but all here in my nose and in my eyes doesn't do anything anymore. I can't feel anything on my right leg. Uh, <laughs> the good old years. <laughs> it's all worth it. It just gets better, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to professional skateboarding. <laughs> it's very serious. What about street league and all that shit? You like that stuff? 
Yeah, I do, I do the commentary on that. On the, I do the live commentary and I do the webca live webcast too. I did that the whole last season. And I, yeah, that's just the whole last season, yeah. and then and then the half of the season before. I enjoy it. The, the do tour, you like that new the I downhill thing? I don't watch it. I've seen some of that stuff. It looks a little bit like a, a, a circus carnival gone wrong to me uh, on the street. You know, yeah. I'm kind of a purist like that. I that's why I want. That's why I'm asking your opinion because you are a purist. So street league. Dude, it's the little. It's still a little X game. It, need, it needs more improvement. You yeah. know, I think it's still a little bit stagnant yeah. visually and as a show. When you watch it, it's the skateboard is absolutely phenomenal, super progressive. Yeah, and we're getting a little bit more culture in there too. I think you know a little yeah. bit more of that. So the more of that we get in, the better it's going to get. But it is the best skateboard in the world. It's the biggest contest. And it's the best contest in the world. And I enjoy skateboarding, so it's no problem for me to sit there for the whole day right. and just talk about dudes when they drop in and do a rad trick like I'm into it yeah I get it it's the truth thanks for being on the show dude thank you you we'll are be... at Jeff Rowley on Twitter if you want to find you at Jeff Rowley on Twitter and same with Instagram and you know the whole nine yards sure and if people want to find out more about your weapons they can go to civilware.co that's right thank you very much if they want to find out more about his house I probably wouldn't do that we'll be back <laughs>